Are you thinking about moving to Spain in 2024 and you're trying to figure out how you can move there, where to live, how much the cost of living is and what kind of taxes you'll pay? Well, this video is for you. Hey guys, it's Johnny. I'm originally from the UK, but I've been living here in Spain for the past four years. I'm really enjoying my time here. I've seen a lot of the country and I also have a good insight as to how Spain works when it comes to administration, bureaucracy and things like taxes. These are all important things to consider if you're planning a move to Spain in 2024. And so I'm going to talk to you about all of the important things that you need to know when considering moving here. So let's get right into it. So let's start off with residency and how can you move to Spain? So if you're an EU citizen or the family member of an EU citizen, then it is relatively straightforward to you. You can simply come to Spain as an EU citizen, register at the police station as a foreigner from the EU, you and your family member if applicable as well, then register your address at the town hall and you're pretty much all set. Now, if you're a non-EU or third country citizen, then things get a little bit more complicated, but there are still ways for you to be able to move to Spain. And in this video, I'm gonna talk about three different types of visa that you can use as a foreigner to move to Spain. So the first one is called the non-lucrative visa or the NLV as it's known in English. This is basically a one-year visa which can be renewed in the future and eventually lead to permanent residency under which you can stay in Spain providing you have sufficient financial means to sustain yourself um, for the period of time that you'll be in the country. What is sufficient financial means? Well, in the case of the NLV, it's proving that you have four times the determined income of the IPREM, which is Spain's multiple effects income indicator. In 2023, the monthly IPREM value in Spain was 600 euros a month. So that would mean that for a non-lucrative visa to be eligible, you would need to be able to provide proof that you have an income of 2,400 euros per month, or about 29,000 euros in a bank account for the year. And this income can be savings, as I said, in a bank account, or it can be passive income from investments or property income as well, because this isn't a working visa. It does not give you the right to work in Spain. It is for passive income or people who have enough savings. So it's ideal for investors who want to spend a season in Spain or even for retirees as well, if you have a large nest egg and you have enough money coming in to be able to retire and, and support yourself in Spain. Now, for people with large amounts of capital, looking to make an investment in Spain, there is a golden visa option for you as well. Now, there are multiple ways to get a golden visa. Probably the most well-known one is by making a property purchase of 500,000 euros. And by doing so, this can open you up to eligibility for a golden visa. But you don't just necessarily have to make a property purchase. There are other ways. You can, for example, deposit a million euros in a bank account in Spain, or you can purchase a million euros worth of stocks and shares in a Spanish uh, company that is, has activities in Spain. And the other investment that will give you eligibility for a golden visa is investing 2 million euros in Spanish public debt securities. And the third visa that was introduced this year and I made a video on back in January about is the digital nomad visa. Now this visa is thought of for people who are remote workers um, or who are you know self-employed, they have their own business, but the company that they work for or their, their business entity is set up outside of Spain. So under this digital nomad visa, you'd essentially be coming to Spain, living there, being employed by a foreign company and receiving your income from a foreign company. Similar to the non-lucrative visa, the digital nomad visa also has income requirement. And the requirement is that you earn at least twice the Spanish minimum wage. So the minimum wage in Spain in 2023 is 1,080 euros per month. So you would need to prove an income of at least 2,160 euros per month. It's important to know that as I make this video as well, the government is currently trying to negotiate an increase in the minimum wage. So it's likely that for 2024, if they achieve this increase in the minimum wage, then of course the digital nomad visa requirements will increase as well. And similarly talking about the NLV, um, the EPREM will also change for 2024. So do factor in that you'll probably need a little bit more than the amounts that I've given you in this video. Now that we've covered different types of residency in Spain, let's talk about where you can go and live in Spain. So Spain is very diverse in terms of its culture, its climate, and what you can expect in each region of the country. Let's start with Madrid, the capital. So this is where I live. Madrid is honestly one of my favorite cities in the world, if not my favorite city in the world. It is full of arts and culture and events. It's great for young people to explore, to go out, to get to know one another. It's a city that's very international, but still manages to maintain the essence of Spanish culture. Um, it's fantastic in terms of the variety of food and restaurants that are available. And it has fantastic architecture and attractions like the Retiro Park and the Casa de Campo. Not to mention, of course, the Prado Museum, Gran Vía the two football
football stadiums um, that are in the city as well. You know, so much to do in Madrid. The other popular big city in Spain is, of course, Barcelona in the northeast in Catalonia. Now, I lived in Barcelona very briefly as well many, many years ago. Barcelona is also a fantastic city, also very international, with more of a Catalan feel, more Catalan culture, um, but a lot of similar things that Madrid has in terms of, you know, nightlife, professional opportunities as well uh, in both cities. And like Madrid, one thing Barcelona has going for it is that it has beaches as it is on the coast. It also has a milder climate in the winter. It's warmer than Madrid in the winter and it's also cooler than Madrid in the summer because you have the wind and the breeze coming in um, from the sea as well. Not too far away from Barcelona, a little bit small but similar feel are Valencia and Alicante. It's worth noting that these two cities were ranked as two of the top expat cities in the world along with Madrid for 2023. So fantastic cities. I've been to both of them. Valencia to me it feels like Barcelona on a smaller scale and less hectic so I really like Valencia as well and Alicante is very very popular with holiday makers from the likes of the UK a lot of UK travelers go to Alicante also very popular in Spain is the south particularly the region of Andalusia where you have cities like Cordoba, Sevilla, Granada, Malaga and Cadiz as well all fantastic cities of course Malaga, Cadiz are coastal cities with uh, beaches and Granada, Sevilla and Cordoba are more inland but they have fantastic architecture and a wonderful cities um, you've got the Alhambra in Granada and you have the Real Alcazar in Sevilla as well part of Spain that people often overlook is the north of Spain places like the Basque country like Asturias and Galicia which are beautiful beautiful regions of Spain as well they have a much cooler climate than the rest of Spain a more temperate climate somewhat resembles like the UK in a sense you know it rains quite a lot but in the north you have a lot of green space you got big hills and small mountains in the north as well like Picos de Europa in Asturias um, you've also got wonderful seafood in Galicia if that's something that you really like these are also becoming very popular summer destinations because of the heat that cities like Madrid experience and even on the coast in the south experience a lot of people are going north for the much fresher cooler summers uh, by the beach as well and so don't rule out some of the cities in the north cities like Bilbao cities like Santander, Oviedo, Gijón, La Coruña uh, Santiago de Compostela is some wonderful cities in the north of Spain great food and great natural beauty as well and finally Spain has islands as well so you have the Balearic Islands off the east coast of Spain but you've also got the Canary Islands which are actually off the west coast of Africa off the coast of Western Sahara and Morocco the Canary Islands very popular for holiday makers great weather all year round and the Balearic Islands as well with fantastic scenery uh, a lot of luxury properties being built on the likes of Palma de Mallorca um, as well so very popular amongst the international travelers um, and visitors to Spain as well and even though you may have settled on one part of Spain definitely go and check out the rest of the country it is very easy to get around whether it be by car Spain has very good road networks you've also got the Ave high-speed trains which can get you pretty much to anywhere in Spain within three to four hours and you can also fly to different parts of Spain as well though there's new legislation pending that is looking to limit uh, short flights uh, across different parts of Spain now when choosing a place to live in Spain it's also important to consider your tax implications where you go in Spain. Depending on your income taxes in Spain can end up being quite high and where you choose to live can also determine how much tax you pay and the reason is because income tax is made up of two components it's made up firstly of state taxes from the central Spanish government and the second part is made up of autonomous region taxes. Now the central government taxes are the same for everybody but the autonomous community taxes can vary depending on where you live. So for example someone living in Madrid who earns 30,000 euros a year, let's give an example, will pay less tax than someone living in Valencia or Barcelona um, who makes the same amount of money because of the way the autonomous community taxes are structured in the Madrid community, in the Valencian community and in Catalonia. So definitely important to get a proper tax assessment and look into the tax implications of moving to Spain as well. Also consider if Spain has a double tax treaty with your country, that will be important to keep in mind as well. For the high income earners, there is a scheme that exists that allows you to pay lower taxes for up to five years if this is the first time you're moving to Spain and that's known as the Beckham Law. Under the Beckham Law, foreigners can pay a flat tax of 24% on income up to 600 
10,000 euros per year for a period of five years. And it's open to new foreigners who are moving to the country who are, for example, directors and managers or highly skilled workers or remote workers as well, also eligible for this. Not self-employed people, unfortunately, they're not eligible for this scheme. But by speaking with a tax lawyer, you'll be able to find out if you're eligible for something like the Beckham scheme. The two other taxes that you'll need to keep in mind are VAT, sales tax, which is 21% on the majority of products sold um, you know, in a supermarket, electronic store, whatever. Um, and they're already incorporated into the price that you see on the item when you buy it as well. And if you're buying a secondhand car or a property, for example, then you've also got a tax known as ITP or ITP in English, which is a tax you pay on the transmission of secondhand goods. And the ITP rate, again, is something that will vary depending on the region of Spain you're in. For example, in Madrid, it is 6% and it can be lower if it's a property in certain cases. Whereas in Catalonia and Valencia, it's around the 10-11% mark, if I'm not mistaken. So keep these in mind when you come into Spain as well. So how much does it cost to live in Spain? Well, let's start with rent, because that's the obvious one that's going to come to people's minds first. And rent can vary greatly depending on which area of the country you live in. I'll put a map on the screen now, which shows the average price per meter square. And what you'll see, of course, is that in some of the big cities and also the popular tourist destinations, that that's where the rent is the most expensive. So you you see on here Madrid, Barcelona, the Balearic Islands, you can see Repuzcoa, which is in the Basque country, and you can also see Malaga as the most expensive places to rent when looking at per meter squared. And you'll see that the cheapest rents per meter squared are actually more inland in what's commonly known uh, as kind of the empty Spain or La España Vacía in Spanish, which is where there's not a large number of the population. And as you can see by the prices of rent in cities like Madrid and Barcelona and some locations on the coast, you can see that a lot of the population is concentrated in certain areas of the country. So if you're looking for a bargain and you're not necessarily looking to live in one of the biggest cities, you could consider checking out a city that's more inland. And so the cheapest provinces per meter squared are Cáceres, Jaén, Ciudad Real and Zamora. The next important thing that you want to know about is the cost of energy and electricity in Spain as well. Now I'll talk about electricity because this has been a very hot topic over the past couple of years. I'll do this in as summarized as a way as I can. So in Spain you have two types of electricity contract basically you can go on the free market or the regulated market. Now, the free market means that your energy bill depends on what your electricity supplier has determined as the set price for your contract and that will carry on through your contract. It won't change unless they inform you of a new price. Because with the regulated market the price of electricity can vary day by day based on the changes in the European electricity market basically. And so in 2021 what happened with the regulated market um, is that while it was normally cheaper for people we saw huge huge increases in the price of electricity uh, on the regulated market so the government introduced some measures to try and control the price of electricity such as lowering VAT and they also managed to make uh, a deal with the European Union along with Portugal for the Iberian exception which essentially further prevented the price of electricity going out of control and so your electricity bill will very much depend on how much electricity you consume how many people are living with you etc but data from the OCU which is the customer uh, protection organization in Spain shows that the average electricity bill per month in Spain for the month of November was about 55 euros per month. Now keep in mind a lot of these temporary measures that were introduced such as lower VAT and the Iberian exception will all come to an end at the end of this year so electricity prices will probably see quite an increase going into next year as well. And keep in mind the seasonality as well if you're coming from a northern European country in Spain you may have to heat your home a little bit in the winter but in the summer you'll almost certainly use a lot of electricity with air conditioning. So the summer months can be pretty expensive when it comes to air conditioning as well. If you're planning on driving in Spain as well, it's good to know the price of fuel. So over the past few months, the price of petrol has been between around 155 and 175 euros per liter. Like electricity, fuel prices also rose significantly in 2022. So there were again lower VATs and some measures brought in by the government to reduce the cost of um, fuel for consumers as well. Again, I think they're set to expire at the end of 2023. If you're looking into an electric vehicle or using an electric vehicle whilst you're in Spain, there is infrastructure being rolled out, particularly in the big cities like Madrid. There are charging points, there are parking spaces dedicated for electric vehicles, but across the rest of the country um, and particularly on you know bigger infrastructure like motorways, I think there's still quite a way to go before we get to a stage where electric mobility can be, you know, a viable 
option for the majority of the population in Spain, let's say. When you go to the supermarket in Spain, again, if you're from North America or if you're from Northern Europe, then you'll find prices are typically a lot, lot lower than in your home country as well. I'll put a comparison with a few items on the screen so that you can see how it compares um, in Spain to your home country. However, again, inflation in 2022 drove food prices up quite a lot. And in 2023, the price of olive oil has increased significantly because of droughts um, in the south of Spain. So as much as supermarket food is cheap, there have been quite some increases over the past few years uh, compared to what it was you know, in 2019, for example. And eating out at restaurants can be quite affordable as well. It's very common for people to eat out um, through the week, on the weekends as well. And particularly if you go to like a local restaurant uh, or a tapas bar, you'll find very affordable prices um, if you're outside of a tourist spot. For the locals, I'll say, you know, not in a tourist area, then you'll probably find much, much better prices, great value for your money, and probably better quality food as well. There's a big culture of tapas and sharing food here as well. Like if you buy a paella, you'll see that it's often minimum two people for the paella. You can share meat, uh, different cuts of meat between people when, um, when eating as well. And if you go to a tapas bar and order a drink, they'll bring you some free tapas some, along sometimes, like, like a bag of crisps, a bag of crisps will be on a plate, probably. Uh, some olives, for example, you get the idea. So if you're a foodie and looking for a good culinary experience, then Spain is definitely a good place to come to. Hi right, guys, I hope you found this video helpful. I hope it's cleared some of your doubts about moving to Spain. Leave a comment and let me know, are you thinking of coming to Spain in 2024 and where are you thinking about moving to? Till next time, I'll see you on the next one and let's get this money.